A family raised a dog for two years only to find out that it wasn't what they thought. Apparently, this happens more than you might think. Here are some of the craziest times that people accidentally adopted wild animals. Adopting a hyena A guy on TikTok wanted to buy a puppy, but instead, the breeder tried to sell him a hyena. That's the story anyway. His tale has gone viral with over 3 million views. According to the TikToker, he replied to a post online for an American bully puppy. The poster had images of the dog's parents, which were totally adorable. The TikToker sent a deposit and was prepared to adopt his new best friend. But then he went to pick up the dog. But when he went to pick up the dog, there was something not quite right. The dog, to put it plainly, looked extremely extremely weird. There was obviously something wrong with the situation. The buyer told the seller that the dog didn't look anything like the parents in the photographs. It didn't even really look like a dog. The buyer said the poor puppy looked more like a wombat or a hyena, but the breeder was adamant that it was a real dog. He showed the buyer the parents and everything. Still though, the puppies looked more like hyenas than normal dogs. Undeterred, the TikToker took the creature anyway and named his new friend Nina. There's no update though, so nobody knows if this guy is is currently raising an actual dog or a hyena. The Sneaky Bear In 2018, news broke that a woman in China purchased a dog from a pet store. Then, the dog turned out to be a fox. Then, just a few days later, an entirely different story broke of a family who accidentally adopted a bear. The bear troubles all began when Su Yun from China's Yunnan province bought a puppy on vacation. Su Yun was told that the puppy was a Tibetan mastiff and to expect that it would grow very large. Immediately after getting the puppy home, the family was impressed with how much it could eat. Their Tibetan Mastiff was growing exponentially, slurping up its dog food and a surprising amount of fruit. The family said they'd even feed it two full buckets of noodles a day because it couldn't get enough. Before long, the family's dog reached a whopping 250 pounds. That alone should have been enough to indicate they were dealing with an entirely different animal, but the family still didn't figure it out. They didn't realize they had a bear in the house until their dog started walking around on two legs. It turned out that the puppy they adopted was an Asiatic black bear. How long do you think it would take you to figure out you accidentally had a bear instead of a really big dog? Once the family realized their mistake, they knew they couldn't keep the bear. They contacted the authorities and their beloved house pet was transferred to the Yunnan Wildlife Rescue Center. The bear will be cared for by proper wildlife professionals, so it's still going to have a good life in the end, hopefully. Maybe the family will even go and visit their ex-dog from time to time. I know I would. The real villain in this story is the pet store that sold them a bear instead of a dog. How did that even happen? And why would it be easier to get a bear cub than an actual dog? First, I want to give a big shout out to Kuvang and Margaret Fleezak. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. We'd love to have you. The Wolf in the Ice on a cold February day in 2019, a group of men were working at a dam in Estonia when they spotted an animal struggling in the icy water. It looked like a dog in distress, but what the animal really was would soon be revealed. There was no way the workers were about to leave a dog to drown or freeze in the icy waters, so they broke a path through the ice of the partially frozen lake and one of the men scooped the dog into his arms. They got it back to safety and started warming the creature up. It was only then, as they patted the beast dry, that they realized they just rescued a wolf. The wild wolf must have been crossing the lake when it broke through the surface and got stuck. Even though it was a potentially deadly woodland critter, the workers still took care of it. They then immediately drove the chilly canine to a local clinic. According to the Estonian Union for the Protection of Animals, the wolf was in rough shape when it arrived at the vet's office. In all honesty, it was likely low blood pressure and almost freezing to death that had the wolf so docile. In most cases, even an injured wolf will lash out at people trying to help, but this wolf was extremely relaxed with the workers, and on the way to the hospital, it even slept on its rescuer's legs. Although they suspected that the animal was a wolf, it wasn't confirmed until a local hunter stopped by the veterinarian's office. He confirmed it to be a young male, about a year old. After the wolf was treated, it made a full recovery and was released back into the wild. The Big Dog 
A couple went down to a kennel to adopt a dog, but they left with something that was only half a dog. This happened in 1987, and the story was recently revealed by the daughter of the couple who adopted the mysterious creature. The woman's parents were living in Palo Alto when their German shepherd passed away. Devastated by the loss, the couple went to get a new dog. When they arrived at the animal shelter, they immediately fell in love with a very large canine. This canine was a big girl, weighing about 100 pounds. There was a connection right away between the dog and the couple. And to make things even better, the animal shelter offered a discount on that particular animal. Maybe the discount was a little suspicious, but the couple was too excited about their new furry friend to pay it any attention. So they named the new dog Mazel and took her home. Things were a little weird from the very first day the couple had Mazel in the house. Their old dog, an extremely smart German Shepherd, never once figured out how to get the kibble out of the plastic garbage can in the garage. But Mazel figured out how to open the door and operate the locking lid of the can in about six minutes. The whole bag of dog food was gone before anyone could stop her. Mazel also didn't chase squirrels like most dogs. She hunted them with startling efficiency. She was a stalking killer in the backyard. The couple understood that their new dog was a little too smart, so they took her to the vet purely out of curiosity. When the veterinarian walked into the room, he recognized Mazel immediately as a wolf. But this was no ordinary wolf. The veterinarian called the animal shelter and after a bit of questioning, got to the truth. Mazel was a wolf-dog hybrid. She was likely part husky and part wolf. Mazel turned out to be the best companion the family could ask for. She lived for 19 years and died peacefully in her sleep. Christian the Lion The 1960s was a wild time to be alive. You could go down to your local pet shop, buy a lion cub, and drive it home in the back of your car. And that was exactly what John Rendell and Anthony Burke did in 1969. They adopted a lion cub, named him Christian, and raised him in their small London apartment. And surprisingly, the adoption turned out better than you might expect. How long do you think you could raise a lion cub in your apartment before things got out of control? For John and Anthony, they lasted about a year. It took both of them and two friends to look after Christian. It was a full-time job. Ensuring the baby lion was never left unattended was of paramount importance, as such lapses often led to issues. Lions live in family units and really don't like spending time by themselves. After about a year, the decision was made that Christian needed to go to Africa. John and Anthony met a couple of actors by happenstance who helped fly Christian to Kenya. The growing lion was placed into the care of a lion conservationist named George Adamson. Then, at the for a national park, Christian was introduced to the wild. It was devastating for John and Anthony to watch Christian disappear into the wilderness, but at the same time, it was also the best thing that could have happened. Lions really don't belong in the big city, especially not in a small apartment. John and Anthony returned to Kenya a few times to be reunited with Christian, and their last reunion was in 1972. They arrived in Africa and found Christian with his own pride of lionesses and a whole batch of young cubs. Christian went from an apartment cat to being the king of his own jungle, the cute kitten. A couple in Tennessee found what they thought was a lost kitten on their back deck, but the kitten turned out to be something much more exciting. It's every cat lover's dream to find a free cat on their back stoop. For a lot of people, it's like Christmas came early. The Tennessee couple took the kitten in and cared for it, though sadly they couldn't keep the little animal. They got in touch with the local animal shelter to see what they should do. When they brought the kitten in, the volunteers at the the shelter immediately knew there was an issue. Although it looked like an ordinary kitten to the untrained eye, the little feline was a real-life bobcat. The frightened animal had to be taken to a different shelter, one that specializes in wild animals and not house cats. If the family had chosen to keep the kitten and raise it as their own, they would have found out eventually that they had a wild animal in the house. Bobcats might start out small, but they grow really big. The average North American bobcat can grow to 30 pounds, twice the size of an average cat, and they also don't make very good house pets. 
The Lost Coyote A family in New England came across a lost puppy in spring of 2022. This sad pup was distressed on the side of a busy road, and the family was the only one to stop and help the puppy. They brought the animal home, thinking they had a new dog that would become part of the household. However, what they actually had was a wild animal. It didn't take long for the Massachusetts family to realize that the puppy was highly unusual. After they got it back to the safety of their house, they started to feel like like maybe they'd just stolen an animal from the wild. They took the mysterious puppy to the Cape Wildlife Center in Barnstable, where experts confirmed their hunch. They hadn't rescued a dog from the side of the road, they'd taken in an eastern coyote puppy. Experts at the Wildlife Center said the puppy likely got separated from its family. In most cases, it's not a good idea to abduct a wild animal, but this was definitely an exception. If not for the kind hearts of the rescuers, the pup likely wouldn't have made it. The coyote Coyote was nursed back to health, and soon enough, it had a new friend. Another rescued coyote arrived at the wildlife center, so the two stray pups will be raised together. It turned out to be the best possible situation for both of the lost coyotes. They may have been separated from their families, but now they have each other. The Killer Chihuahua Rumpelstiltskin is one of the most unusual chihuahuas that's ever lived. He's extremely unusual for two reasons. Rumpelstiltskin's legs are a lot longer than they should be making him look like a dog with spider legs. And once upon a time, he ate somebody. Literally, the chihuahua ate an entire person. Rumpelstiltskin was adopted from an animal shelter by a kind soul who didn't mind the dog's unusual appearance. Rumpelstiltskin arrived at an animal shelter after his owner passed away. The dog's previous owner died at home and wasn't discovered by anybody for a considerable time. And this left Rumpelstiltskin without any dog food. At this point, you likely have a fairly good idea of what happened. When people finally realized the owner was dead, they entered the house to find Rumpelstiltskin surprisingly healthy. But then came another gruesome discovery. The little chihuahua had survived by eating his own human. Rumpelstiltskin's new owner doesn't mind that his pooch ate his previous owner. He calls his new dog a survivalist. The chihuahua has been through some serious hardship. After all, it couldn't have been easy for the dog to chow down on its previous best friend. That's not a choice any dog takes lightly. These days, Rumpelstiltskin is happy in his new home. He loves food, lots of attention, and sleeping most of the day. He also likes freaking people out with his unnaturally long legs. Jessica the Hippo In Africa, the hippopotamus is the most dangerous animal around. Hippos are more feared than lions, hyenas, or elephants. But there is one hippo that lives in a house with a human and never eats anybody. Her name is Jessica, and this is her unbelievable story. It all started with a series of catastrophic floods in the year 2000. The floods destroyed parts of South Africa as well as Mozambique. In the days after the disaster, game ranger Tony came across a hippopotamus calf on the banks of the Blyde River in South Africa. The hippopotamus had only just been born and still had her umbilical cord attached. She had very little chance of surviving in the wild without her mother. The hippo was weak and on the verge of death, so Tony couldn't sit by and do nothing. He took the tiny hippo back home and nursed her to health on cow's milk. Before Tony knew what was happening, the hippo had become his best friend. Jessica got along with the dogs in the house, even sleeping inside in a bed like she was an oversized puppy. Then, when Tony met his wife Shirley, Jessica the hippo became like a stepdaughter. The couple raised her until Jessica was a fully grown adult. Then, they tried to integrate her back into the wild. But it didn't work quite the way they were hoping. Jessica did hang out in the river with other hippos, but she always returned to Tony's house. They tried to make Jessica into a wild hippo, but she wasn't having any of it. She's since become a worldwide phenomenon. Jessica is even a movie star. She was in the South African film Mr. Mr. Bones, and she's also made guest appearances in documentaries from National Geographic, Animal Planet, and the Discovery Channel. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. Interactive Zoo Encounter Gone Wrong In August of this year, a man named Dwight Turner was attacked by a black leopard in Florida. He paid $150 to enter the animal's cage, which was part of a full contact experience at a roadside zoo at someone's house. Instead of being able to rub its belly and take photos like he thought, the leopard turned ferocious and ripped Turner's ear in half, then viciously bit into his head, to the point where the man's wife had to readjust a loose flap of skin over an exposed part of his skull. 
Michael Poggi, the animal dealer who facilitated the so-called full contact experience, was just as taken aback as everyone else that day. He planned for Turner and the leopard to interact peacefully just like he and his leopard had done many times before, but things went terribly wrong. National Geographic reports that the unexpected turn of events served as a dismal reminder of the tragedies that can happen when humans get too close to wild animals. The desire to post videos and photos with big cats to social media makes it seem as if big cats are not dangerous, and big cat owners have become mega famous thanks to Tiger King, TikTok, and everything else. The pet owners will show videos playing, swimming, and wrestling with their big cats, giving the false impression that it's safe. These are animals whose brains are literally designed to be ambush predators, conservation biologist Imogene Cancellare told Nat Geo. There is no scenario in which entering a space with big cats is going to be 100% safe, even if it's been hand-raised, adding that hand-raised big cats are still genetically wild and are only accustomed to interacting with their handlers rather than the human population at large. It's a compelling argument, especially knowing what Turner went through, and a good reason to think twice about the pros and cons of that photo op. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission investigated the case, saying that Turner was still at risk of losing his ear. Big cat encounters are rare at U.S. roadside zoos because there must be physical barriers between the public and big cats 12 weeks or older. The margin of error in these interactions, says National Geographic explorer Andrew Stein, founder of Claws Conservancy, a nonprofit focused on mitigating human wildlife conflict, is the difference between having a safe encounter and possibly dying. Turner intends to file a lawsuit against Poggi, the owner of the leopard. There are just no winners in this situation. Deadly Bear Attack Chinese zoo Shanghai Wildlife Park came under fire in October of this year after a bear mauled one of its employees to death in broad daylight in front of horrified onlookers. The incident happened in the park's wild beast area as a group of tourists watched from a bus, capturing disturbing footage that appeared on the Chinese social media platform Weibo. In the video, numerous bears can be seen gathering in one area, while panic-stricken spectators shouted in what can best be described as shock and disbelief. Naturally, Shanghai Wildlife Park understood that it had some explaining to do. In a statement on its website, the establishment offered its condolences to the slaughtered staff member's family and apologized to tourists for any inconvenience caused, adding that the park was extremely distressed that such a tragedy occurred. Moreover, the company vowed to investigate the event, improve its safety management standards, and, in the park's words, do our best to handle the aftermath of the incident. The Wild Beast exhibit was subsequently closed, and refunds were issued to ticket holders. It appears as though the tragedy caused some people to rethink animal captivity altogether, with some suggesting that the right thing to do is to close zoos and make them a thing of the past. Tiger vs. Zookeeper In July, a female zookeeper in Zurich, Switzerland, lost her life to a Siberian tiger named Irina in plain view of visitors and other zoo employees. The 55-year-old woman perished at the scene, despite her co-workers' best efforts to pry the big cat away from her. Eventually, employees managed to lure the beast into a separate enclosure, but their efforts to revive their fallen colleague failed. Sadly, all help came too late, zoo spokesperson Judith Hodel said in a statement. The zoo was left with the unfortunate task of determining why the zookeeper entered the cage while Irina was in there. Professional counseling was provided to those in need, and the zoo extended its full sympathy to the victim's family and loved ones. But many people believe that these courtesies would not be necessary in a world that did not confine wild animals to unnatural environments. A BBC article about the upsetting incident claims that captive animal attacks on humans are relatively rare, but also points out that this was not the first time an animal mauled a zookeeper at the Zurich Zoo. Don't worry, I'll tell you about it. A critically endangered death Employees shot and killed a critically endangered Philippine crocodile at the Zurich Zoo one evening in December 2019, after the reptile bit a zookeeper's hand and refused to let go. The incident happened when the staff member attempted to separate the crocodile so she could clean his enclosure. Only the crocodile himself knows why he bit the woman's hand and maintained his grip for several minutes, although the zoo vowed to look into the possible reasons for the attack. Thankfully, the injured zookeeper zookeeper survived, and while her wound required surgery, it looked as though she would fully recover. But the loss of an animal, especially a member of a vulnerable species, represents an often overlooked downside to the event. In a world where endangered animals are rapidly going extinct, it's important to consider any and all viable alternatives to bringing them in close proximity
proximity to people, which unavoidably increases the possibility of a life or death situation that warrants killing an animal to spare a human's life. The crocodile who was shot to save the zookeeper's life was a member of a rare species from the Mindanao Islands of the Philippines, of which there are an estimated 250 or fewer specimens left in the wild. Cat and Mouse Game Viral footage of an attack that happened back in February only recently surfaced online, showing the moment a captive lion bit a zoo guide's hand and nearly tore the man's arm off at Park Han, a zoo in Dakar, Senegal. The employee, named Abdullah Wade, was allegedly trying to show off to visitors when he foolishly decided to stick his hand through the metal bars of the big cat's enclosure and attempted to pet the lion, at which point the animal chomped down without hesitation. In the gruesome video of the attack, it's apparent that the lion almost rips Wade's arm right out of its socket as he screams in agony. Visitors can be heard panicking in the background as the gory event unfolds, with some throwing rocks at the lion in an attempt to free the victim. Wade was finally released from the animal's grasp when he used his free hand to hit the big cat on the head. Thankfully, his arm and hand were still attached to his body, albeit dripping with blood. In the aftermath of the horrifying encounter, some spectators accused Wade of provoking the lion prior to the attack, backing up their allegations with video footage that they claimed was filmed shortly before the tiff occurred. According to some visitors' version of events, Wade played a dangerous cat and mouse game with the lion by repeatedly sticking his hand into the cage and pulling it away before the creature could bite him, until he eventually didn't move fast enough to avoid the animal's jaws. Man Tries to Drown Bear Once in a while, an unruly zoo visitor becomes a little too brave for their own good and ventures far too close to a wild animal. In many of these cases, the person's behavior triggers the creature to attack, but this time the man was lucky because the bear was nice. In May of this year, a 23-year-old drunk zoo-goer reportedly broke into a bear exhibit at the Warsaw Zoo in Poland, causing a bear named Sabina to charge straight at him. The drunkard then jumped into a nearby moat, and the bear, apparently not in the mood for the man's shenanigans, followed. The intruder laid siege to the bear, even attempting to drown it as appalled guests looked on. In what TMZ appropriately called a bear-y dumb move, disturbing video footage shows the man trying to shove the bear's head underwater as the pair struggle against one another. Surprisingly, the bear eventually gave up the fight, giving the unwelcome guest the chance to walk away, which he was hopefully thankful for once he sobered up and understood the gravity of his actions and how much worse things could have turned out. The unlikely outcome was probably influenced by Sabina's age. As an elderly retired circus animal, she was unfortunately used to being abused by humans, which explains why she reacted differently than animals who are raised under different circumstances. The zoo said that Sabina was physically unharmed, but mentally and emotionally traumatized by the encounter. The Warsaw Zoo vowed to bring her attacker to justice, and he was criminally prosecuted for his behavior. Drunk Monkey Attack A monkey named Kalua was left hungry and craving alcohol when his owner passed away in 2017 in India's Mirzapur district. As a result, the enraged primate went on a violent spree, attacking as many as 250 people, injuring many and even killing someone. The person who originally owned Kalua regularly provided the monkey with alcohol. Over the years, he became an alcoholic, and when the flow of liquor stopped with his caretaker's death, the aggression began. Forest and zoo specialists were called in to get the situation under control and successfully captured Kalua after several failed attempts. They brought him to the Kanpur Zoo, where he received a sentence of life behind bars. Acclimating Kalua to zoo life was a process, according to veterinarian Maud Nasir, who stated earlier this year, we kept him in isolation for some months and then shifted him to a separate cage. There has been no change in his behavior and he remains as aggressive as he was. It has been three years since he was brought here but now it has been decided he will remain in captivity all his life. As awful as solitary confinement may sound, the alternative would be to euthanize Kalua. Thankfully, the zoo's staff chose to give him the best life possible for an animal who was brought up under such abnormal circumstances. And while the idea of an intoxicated monkey may initially come across as funny, the damage to people's lives and to Kalua's life speaks for itself when it comes to the harm that can come from giving alcohol to animals. 
Visitor Loses Pants A free-roaming bison mother took matters into her own hands in August of this year when a tourist came too close to her and her calf for comfort at Custer State Park in South Dakota. Meaning no harm, the female visitor approached a bison herd with camera in hand, hoping to get some up-close snapshots of the wild animals. The bisons responded by charging toward the woman, blocking a road that runs through the park and catching the attention of other visitors, who pulled out their cameras and hit record. Footage of the incident shows one herd member, the mother who sprang into action to defend her baby, swinging the tourist around like a rag doll, ripping the woman's pants off in the process. A close re-examination of the video shows that the bison's horn became hooked on the tourist's jeans, literally launching her out of her pants. This was easily going to happen to the woman, one bystander wrote on a Facebook post that has since been deleted. I just knew they weren't respecting these massive, beautiful creatures' space. The spectator reported that the attacking bison was not euthanized and that the tourist was taken to the hospital with non-serious injuries. Elephant gets fed up The Monterey Zoo in California made headlines in August after being sued by People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, better known as PETA, a nonprofit animal rights group that is well known for blowing the whistle on people and organizations who mistreat and abuse animals. PETA alleged that the zoo used illegal, torturous training methods on its resident elephants, including painful prods and bull hooks, which are against the law in California. The accusations also detailed an incident that the zoo supposedly failed to report, which involved an elephant named Paula attacking and seriously injuring an employee, breaking the staff member's back and ankle. During the incident, Paula reportedly began thrashing and stepped on the handler as another employee struck her with a cane to try getting her under control, according to a PETA article containing information obtained from California Division of Occupational Safety and Health Documents. Despite the severity of the attack, it was allegedly never reported to the California Department of Fish and Wildlife as protocol dictates. Even more strangely, PETA claims that Paula passed away within months of the encounter, and the organization also suspects that another elephant who was present during the attack has also died. California's ban on bull hooks and other brutal weapons to control elephants went into effect in 2018. Activists believe that these so-called training techniques can ultimately bring out an elephant's aggressive side, and judging by the hush-hush incident at the Monterey Zoo, they weren't necessarily wrong. Man comes too close to tigress As writer Amitabh Srivastava points out in an India Today article about animals attacking humans at zoos, while these encounters are statistically rare, zoos can be a dangerous place if one throws caution to the wind. In other words, people have a responsibility to exercise utmost care when they go near an animal exhibit. An example is an attack that happened earlier this year at Bhagwan Birsa Biological Park in Jharkhand, India. While visiting the zoo, a 35-year-old man named Wasim Ansari scaled a tree and jumped across a dry moat to access a tiger exhibit. Why? Why though? He was consequently mauled to death by a nine-year-old tigress named Anushka. Security guards didn't notice Ansari's overstepping until he was dangerously close to Anushka, at which point they, along with the zoo's guests, began clapping and making noise to try scaring the tiger away from the man. Anushka was unmoved by their efforts, and employees failed to retrieve a tranquilizer gun before she clamped her jaws down on Ansari's neck, thereby ending his life. This unfortunate incident is an example of how zoo enclosures are built more to keep animals from escaping than they are to prevent people from entering. After all, we should know better. But anywhere humans go, human safety is an unavoidable factor that companies and property owners need to consider. By doing so, they can ensure that zoos remain safe and fun places where people can learn about fascinating wildlife without unintentionally or knowingly jeopardizing their safety. Zoos need to protect us humans from ourselves. Thanks for watching! Remember, don't jump into animal enclosures or stick your hands in cages or try to rub the tiger's belly and you should be fine. Animals need their space too. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you soon. Bye!